strange world Hoping I could learn a bit about how to give and take But since I came here felt the joy and the fear Pseudo-genes are in fact uh, genes that once apparently had a function but have acquired a number of lethal flaws that render them no longer functioning. Now when you look around our genome or that of a mouse or a dog or a cat or a cow, you will find quite a lot of these. And a particularly interesting circumstance, of course, is when you find the human has a gene that was once active in other species. And here's a circumstance uh, that is uh, particularly interesting. If you look across human, chimp, and dog as three possible uh, organisms whose sequence we have in front of us, and if you find the order of three genes as A, B, and C, you will often find that order is preserved in other organisms in the mammalian lineage. That in itself suggests a common ancestor, but doesn't prove it. But occasionally, you'll find a circumstance where the human gene is a pseudogene. It's sustained a knockout blow. It's no longer functioning. It has a lethal flaw. But the chimp and the dog will still have that gene functioning. Now, that is a great puzzle unless you're going to postulate a common ancestor. If God, in fact, had created the human genome independently as an act of special creation, why would God have placed in this very position a non-functioning gene? So for both this case and the chromosome 2 case, I think it becomes extremely difficult to avoid the conclusion that we are descended from a common ancestor as are other living things. How milk does evolution good? Well, Rob, this story is about how mammals evolved and the role that milk played. And Mammals first appeared on the scene about 200 million years ago, and they evolved from reptiles. And two of the big things that distinguish mammals from reptiles is, first, that they don't lay eggs, and second, that they nurse their young with milk. But researchers were sort of unclear about when these adaptations happened and how they influenced how mammals evolved. Did they look at the platypus, which produces both milk and lays eggs? They did, Rob. It's a good point. They looked at the platypus, which is known as a monotreme, and as you say, it lays eggs and produces milk. And they also looked at dogs and humans and also opossums. And what they did is they looked at the genes in all of these animals, and they compared them to genes that they know in chickens help produce eggs. And all of these genes actually are present in all of the mammals I just mentioned, but not surprisingly in humans and opossums and dogs. None of the genes work anymore. In platypuses, one of these egg genes still works. So only one of the three genes is actually needed for laying eggs? Right, but platypus eggs aren't that similar to reptile eggs. In fact, they have a lot less yolk than reptile eggs, which would make sense if only one of their egg-laying genes is still active. And what the researchers found is when they compared all these genes, they found out that these egg-laying genes were shut off about 30 to 70 million years ago. So that gave them their first time frame about exactly when mammals may have stopped laying eggs. 